Surprise, it's another Raycon sponsorship, Alaka Flarple. That's because over a month later, I can honestly say that the Raycon Everyday E25s are still a constant part of my everyday life. They're super tiny and fit in my ears so comfortably that I can go about all my business and literally forgot I've got them in. Not joking, I was actually annoyed that I had to take them out in order to do this video. They can last up to six hours on their own, and this amazing and snappy and fun little case charges them so you can get up to 24 hours of listening without having to find an outlet. The sound quality is great, they're nice and bassy, they're low profile, they're super easy to hook up to Bluetooth, and they come with an assortment of silicone gel tips to fit any and all ears. The Raycon Everyday E25s are still about half the price of other premium wireless earbuds, and you can still get 15% off at buyraycon.com com slash Arlo. Link still in the description below. Uh, hello my wonderful friends and welcome to yet another Nintendo News Roundup. I'm trying to turn this into a Sunday thing. I don't know. Sunday schedule. Just kind of seems to work with these. Uh, so, uh, it was a, it was a pretty slow news week. You know, I mean, like, uh, what do you got? Uh, Nintendo revealed a new Paper Mario game or something. I don't even, I don't even know what that is. No, seriously. Um, obviously I won't go too deep into it in this video because I already did a whole reaction and discussion, and I'm sure I will be talking about this game a whole lot <laughs> over the next two months. But I would be remiss not to mention in a Nintendo news roundup that Nintendo revealed Paper Mario: The Origami King. This is a brand new Switch exclusive Paper Mario game, and um, I would say that reception has been relatively warm for it so far. Um, I am kind of on the fence. I have some doubts about it, but then aspects of it seem really promising. Um, overall, disappointing that they still refuse to go back to the formula that we're kind of looking for, but could be good in its own way. Um, I'm seeing some people, sort of like me, some disappointed, some kind of in the middle. Um, overall though, like I said, much, much warmer than, you know, compared to the reception to the news, you know. You were there. You were probably there with the whole color splash thing. It was not pretty. It was not pretty at all. This, comparatively, much, much better, much more positive. People are thinking that this game looks a lot better, so that's nice. Perhaps the biggest news is that it is set to release in July. A mere two months away, Arlo is always going on and on and on about how we're clearly not going to get anything for the rest of the year because they announce things and there's always a certain amount of time before reveal and release. Overall, I still feel that that is true. For the most part, that's usually what we can expect, though there are those cases like this that happen seemingly just to prove Arlo wrong. <laughs> I don't know why this wasn't revealed in the uh, the mini direct. I feel like maybe it was supposed to, um, but maybe, I don't know, maybe this whole thing has delayed them. Maybe they couldn't get the trailer out in time or something like that. Maybe they weren't sure about anything. Um, maybe they were gonna release the game later, but decided to push it up a little bit just to, I don't know, give us something else to play, make the year seem a little less spread out. Who knows, but yeah, two months. Paper Mario, the Origami King, my gosh. It's not every single day you wake up to a random Twitter drop of a new Paper Mario game. Um, and that's almost a news item in itself. When it news started to drop that Nintendo probably wasn't going to be doing a major direct in June, um, you know, we didn't know if this was going to just be delayed until later. We didn't know if they were going to repackage their announcements in some other way. The idea that they would just start dropping them randomly on Twitter did cross our minds. And, um, this is something of an answer, at least in this case. They might not do it again later, but at least in this case, yeah, they just revealed another major first party game at random without warning just by dropping the trailer on Twitter and on their YouTube channel. I'm not a huge fan of this. I'm okay with it being on Twitter, but as I've said before, I just would like some notice, you know? Cause it's not, it's not fun to see everyone's reaction to a thing before you even get to react to it. I was kind of lucky in this case. I got to kind of see it. You know, I knew something had happened, but I didn't know what yet. But overall though, I do hope they kind of tweak that. At least say like, join us tomorrow for a big announcement, you know, tomorrow at 9 a.m. or whatever. Um, Though I will say, the complete and utter surprise factor it does have 
its own certain charm, doesn't it? <laughs> Following that news comes a renewed rumor of a Pikmin 3 port coming to the Switch. Um, this has obviously been rumored for a while now, but it's always been one of those things. Is it really a rumor? Is it really just something we expect as you know, just an inevitability? Um, this time, this particular time, this week, um, it comes from publication Venture Beat. They have a whole write-up here. Like, I mean, at least at the moment, this is all I see people referencing. Um, they have a whole write-up on Paper Mario Origami King. And then, just really randomly, right at the end, is this little bit here. Other Nintendo Studios will have games ready for release soon as well. That includes the 3D Mario remasters, which we talked about before, have been a very big rumor recently, but it should also include Pikmin 3 Deluxe. They don't really say why they're so sure about this or why they just threw that on there, um, but it is, like I said, it's something people have been talking about for a long time. Um, at this point, I'm starting to be willing to believe anything. At this point, it seems like someone at Nintendo, maybe even just one person, is leaking literally everything. Because there have been no surprises this year. All of the exact, I mean, I don't usually, I don't usually listen to these rumors. I've said that before, and yet the exact timing of every direct has been predicted by someone. All of the reveals have been predicted. I mean, Paper Mario rumor ended up being completely true. So I'm at, at this point, I'm just waiting for the reveal of the, the Mario remasters and yeah, Pikmin 3 Deluxe, that's ah, a sure thing at this point. <laughs> that's, just, that's just where I am. Clearly there is a leaker somewhere. So why would they not have all of the information? Why would these all not be true? I don't really know, we'll just have to wait and see. I've given all of my opinions about Pikmin 3 so many times by now, you know, it would be awesome and I would love it, but it would also be slightly disappointing because it's like, yeah, but where's 4? <laughs> you know what I mean? Or at the very least, why? I want to be able to play 1 and 2 and 3 on my Switch. Not everybody just wants to start with 3. If you want to really make fans of the series, you gotta give us more than just 3. That's like the bare minimum would be 3. Um, but if it happens, I'll be sure to keep... <laughs> Talk about it a whole bunch at that time. Moving on, Nintendo, as we've talked about before, has been facing stock shortages with the Switch because of the high demand and the difficulty in getting them manufactured. Nintendo themselves have also mentioned how any number of their products could end up getting delayed over the course of the next year or however long all of this lasts. The last report that we got did, however, say that they could see an uptick in Switch production. It seemed like things were getting back on track and they might have been able to, uh, you know, Know, produce more than they originally thought they would. However, they're swinging back around now and there is there is renewed doubt about how many switches they're gonna be able to put out. According to Bloomberg, printed circuit boards found within the switch are manufactured in Malaysia and the Philippines provide passive components which are then attached to the PCBs. And both of those companies are having to drastically limit business operations at the moment. So this could have a serious impact on Nintendo's Switch production. An analyst told Bloomberg, the inventory may recover in the summer, but we may see shortages again toward the year end because Nintendo wouldn't be able to produce enough units for the shopping season. If this is true, then it is going to be more difficult than ever for Nintendo to meet their very high Switch sales forecast for the next fiscal year. Um, hopefully it doesn't end up being too big of a problem. I know that this holiday season, the Switch is going to be a very, very hot item. So we'll just have to wait and see if Nintendo is at least mostly able to meet the demand or if it's gonna become a really big problem. I really hope not. And speaking of the Nintendo Switch, <laughs> according to a man named David Gibson, who is an investment advisor who attended a Q&A session hosted by Nintendo after their big financial report went out, he claims that Nintendo's representatives described the Switch as being barely in the middle of its life cycle. This is interesting because how long will the Switch last has been kind of a kind of a big question throughout its life. Um, kind of early on, Nintendo threw out some some weird things talking about like, oh, this could be like a 10 year thing. We didn't know if that meant 10 years overall of support or 10 years of being their primary console, you know what I mean? So it, it is nice to see Nintendo representatives themselves saying the Switch is now about halfway done. And it's about three and a half years old, which 
if that is the exact halfway point, then that means that this is a seven year console cycle, which is completely normal. Like just absolutely standard by this point. And I think that's perfect. I think any longer than that would just be too long. I think seven years is perfect. I'd even like shave off a little bit. I'd go like six or something if it were up to me, uh, just cause I'm actually starting to kind of itch for a more powerful Switch console. But if they do a mid-generation upgrade, you know, a Switch Pro or whatever, like we've talked about plenty of times before, that would certainly help. Um, but I'd, I'd be happy with seven years. I don't want them to push it too far. I, I There will come a time when we all wanna see what's next. We all wanna see these handheld games looking even better, running even more powerful hardware and all that stuff. Now this is information coming from a guy who got it from another just person who is a representative of Nintendo that could technically mean that there's, you know, something wrong anywhere in here. Someone doesn't have the right info or something like that. But at the moment, I'm I'm going to stick to this. I'm I'm going to I'm going to assume that this is more or less accurate. And it's nice to be able to plan, you know. It's nice to just just kind of keep mental note of how long the switch will last. One piece of news that was a little bit interesting, but is now more funny than anything in hindsight. <laughs> Sorry, some of these stories, I mean, you know, I do this once a week, I don't do it every day, so obviously some of these are a couple days old by the time I get to them. Um, Nintendo president Shuntaro Furukawa went on record saying that, hey, don't worry too much that there aren't a lot of games coming out this year, we got more games coming that have not yet been announced. So even just that, lose nice confirmation that there would be games coming that we haven't heard of yet, especially, you know, I'm, I'm always complaining. If we haven't heard about it yet, there's no way that it's coming. So obviously Paper Mario <laughs> was one of those games. Um, are there more than that? We don't really know. Do they have any other big surprises up their sleeves? Who can say for sure, but he did say that. He did say games. He didn't say we have a game coming for this period that we haven't revealed yet. He did say games, so who knows? I mean, I would hope that they have something else to reveal. If they originally planned on doing something like a Nintendo Direct in June, I would think they had games planned to be revealed at that time too. So as I becoming something of a catchphrase for me, we'll just have to wait and see. So here's some very exciting news. Uh, so Retro Studios has been gradually hiring people over a good amount of time now. Like th this is a, this has been a common occurrence now, seeing that they have hired people. And it seems like they're hiring a lot of folks from other very big studios, people who have worked on other big AAA games. And like, naturally, we don't know what these people will end up doing for Retro. Technically, we don't know how many of these people are exclusively working on Metroid Prime 4. Retro could have multiple projects going at the moment. Who really knows for sure, but I mean, it's safe to um, at least guess that they probably are working on Metroid Prime 4. The latest round of hires brought on three new visual effects artists who have worked on games such as Battlefield Hardline, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Borderlands 3. Now, I love Nintendo. I love Nintendo's uniqueness. There are many things that the greater AAA game industry does that Nintendo does not do, and I love them for it. However, I think that more often than they do, they could take a page out of the AAA industry's book just to help make a product all the more exciting and just cool, <laughs> you know what I mean? I think coolness factor really does play into sales often. So the fact that they are now hiring all of these people from all these other series and all these other companies, potentially, ideally, to work on Metroid Prime 4, that is very exciting. Nintendo tends to get caught up in itself a lot and kind of uh, isolate itself from the outside industry. So bringing in people who have experience from all over, I'm just hoping they can kind of inject Metroid Prime 4 with some of that, <laughs> some of that triple A spice, you know what I mean? Bring in some of the elements from the greater video game industry that I feel Nintendo games could really benefit from. So, um, there's not much to go by here. It could mean little to nothing to us in the long run. Who really knows, but I will say it is fun. And I'll also take any, any tidbit at all about Metroid Prime 4, even if it's the tiniest thing, and it might technically might not even be about Metroid Prime 4, I will take it because I am that desperate. Now here's a very exciting bit of news that does not pertain to Nintendo directly, but could end up pertaining to Nintendo. A very large number of indie game studios are coming together uh, in June and just about around E3 time, they're making a, a big showcase of indie games called the Guerrilla Collective. 
Basically, like a big E3 presentation, probably with a whole bunch of great reveals and stuff, except just indie games, and with a bunch of them all just kind of crammed together. I mean, like, it almost seems weird that this hasn't been done before, but I guess it's because people have had their platforms before, and now there's not as much of a platform, so they're just sort of getting together and saying, why don't we just do it ourselves? Uh, and of course, any number of these games could, and probably will, end up coming to the Switch. And so, even though it's not directly a Nintendo-related thing, that uh, you, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, check out the list. There's just a, I don't know, just a ton of really great studios coming. So I'm very excited to see what kinds of stuff that they reveal. I'd love a new SteamWorld tease. Yeah, that'd be fun. And finally, the Nintendo Switch eShop is now home to what seems to be the Switch's very first asset flip. Earlier in the Switch's life, the eShop was curated a little more carefully. Um, Nintendo was just a little bit, you know, they weren't super loose about who they would let put what on the eShop. Over time, they became more comfortable with people just releasing more and more and more, and we all started to see lower and lower quality games hitting the service, um, which was a little disappointing. I even made a whole video about it, how it's just like the Switch eShop is great, but it just seems that over time that quality is going to start going downhill. And uh, we've seen a lot of problems with with marketplaces like Steam and, and even now like the PlayStation Store now where the more low quality games that flood it, it, it makes it harder to find the actual good stuff. It makes it just seem very cluttered. And I know, you know, quality is subjective and all that stuff, but there comes a point where a game is broken and buggy enough that it's just, it only reflects badly on the platform. It's not something anyone is going to enjoy. It should not be there for us to purchase. And I know it's not exactly practical for them to hire somebody or people to play through every single game that gets put on the service. However, I do think that some amount of control here would, would really work wonders. And it would prevent the worst of the worst from hitting the service. Back to the original point, game creation software, uh, you know, like Unity, they will have storefronts where you can buy assets from them uh, just to help you build your own game. Sometimes they will have complete game demos, like games that you can just kind of take and uh, replace the assets with your own. It's really just a tool to get you started and help you kind of figure out the game creation process. They're not supposed to be real games, but what some people do is they take these little demo games and just re-upload them onto a platform, give it a new name, and claim it as their own. This obviously leads to some very, very low quality games. It leads to just tons and tons of the same copy-pasted games. And that's what happened here on the eShop, is the Switch has its very first asset flip. It is called The Bullet Time of Revenge. And um, it's only worth mentioning because it's just, it's kind of a big step it's kind of a big step in a very bad direction, and so a lot of people have gotten pretty upset about it. And I can certainly understand that. I don't want the eShop to be like Steam. It's already kind of slipping. It's already hard to like look through the sales because there are just so, so many low quality games on there. It's hard to sift through them all. And so Nintendo allowing a pure copy paste asset flip like this to go on the eShop, it kind of sets a bad precedent. It kind of sends a message that this kind of thing is okay. Um, it's possible that they didn't intend it to. Maybe just slip through the cracks. Maybe they'll take it down. Who really knows? Um, but it's not fun. <laughs> Let's just say it's not really fun when the eShop has already been. I'm not going to say the eShop is going downhill. Obviously, there's still a lot of really great stuff on it. Um, but it is disappointing to see. And I certainly hope that going forward, Nintendo starts to uh, put their foot down a little when it comes to uh, what games they allow on their platform. Well, thank you for watching. Tune in probably next week, probably on Sunday, for another Nintendo News Roundup. Have a good day.